Hi, it's Lori, the armchair chef. Um, right now, I am coming to you as a postal nut. I'm going to give you a little bit of shipping information about specifically in regard to our ornament swap that we have going on. I've done a little bit of research and I was putting together this video, but it was really too complicated and um, a lot of stuff in it that was boring. So I'm actually going to use visual. I'm going to use sight aids, visual aids. Is that what they call it? Yeah. Lori, visual aids, right? Teaching, they work great. So these are my ornaments that I have made. Okay, the little bags. I'm not finished with them yet, but these are the little bags. And if I want to put something in them, it's going to make them bigger. Okay. Now, the bags that I've got to put them in that I have purchased are these little padded five by seven bags. And I also got some inserts that are bubble wrap for a little extra padding. And this doesn't hurt because I can use this for other things too, but I've got these on Timu. Um, it's bubble wrap and that. This is actually, I guess, bigger. But, okay, this has a little teeny bitty height to it. Now, that along with this is probably a quarter of an inch, okay? That is the maximum size of your envelope, if you want to send it, letter rate with non-machinable surcharge, which would be 60 cents with a 40 cents, one dollar and six cents. Okay. If it's bigger than this, it has to go as a parcel, which will probably be more than $4. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can't be smaller than this size. And it can't be over, um, let's see, what was the, I might not remember, but the most important thing is because we're doing crochet, a double layer of crochet is a half an inch. So I'm already over with my bag because it's a half an inch. So any of you that have done something that's a double layer, you will not be able to send it as a letter with a non-machinable surcharge unless you can compress it. If you can compress it down, maybe with a um, vacuum sealer under a quarter of an inch, then you, you, you can do it. But you also have to understand that one of the other guidelines is that it's supposed to be the same size all the way across to be a letter. So you would almost have to, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that it's, it, uh, okay, now my idea was compress it in between like some cardboard well, then that makes it rigid where it won't bend. So then it's not a letter either because anything that goes through the machine is machinable. Now it becomes non-machinable when it's lumpy. So this will be non-machinable, but it has to be under a quarter of an inch. One layer of crochet would be a quarter of an inch and you would only have to pay a dollar six. Once it becomes a half an inch, it becomes a parcel. It'll have to go ground advantage for the cheapest one. Now, I did punch in something into the post office website for Canada because I have two people in Canada on my lists. I'm on two lists and um, one person's on both lists. So I'm gonna be sending two ornaments to her and then another person gets one ornament. And I punched in five by seven I punched in eight ounces, which is a real lot heavy. Um, Cause that's like half a pound. That That's very heavy, but I wanted, cause I don't know what people are sending. So I decided to do that, but I put an inch. I put an inch and an inch is quite large. An inch is probably this, which could be an ornament with something in it, like some candy or something, okay? <clears throat> or if you're doing a thicker ornament, that came up at $15 and I put it at a $5 value. Um, it has to have some sort of a value. And that was on the post office website. Now, some of your third-party mailers might have different 
options. I will put a link into the pirate ship website and tell you how to sign up for their special international rate, what you need to ask for, because I did it and it reduced my Canada shipping by $6 when I sent uh, a package and the person hasn't gotten it yet. And it's been, I sent it out on the October 2nd and she hasn't got it yet. It's, it's uh, Linda and Linda bought something for me and it's, or won some, I, I, anyway, I ended up sending something to her and it's still in transit from the second. So yeah, you're going to want to be very careful with the stuff you send to Canada. Um, they have to send things to us. They have to send nine items, possibly nine items to the United States. And I really feel bad for them because it's going to be, there's going to be a crapshoot whether we even get it or not. Um, and it's going to have to be done early. So, yeah, I really, I'm really not, I really feel bad for them. They have to send way more to us than we have to send to them. So, anyway, I wanted to give you this information because I know some of you are doing things that are double layer. You're doing stockings. Um, I think Robin and, and Dana are doing stockings. I haven't seen anybody else what they're doing, but I'm doing the little bags and it's a double layer and I wanted to put something in it. So what I'll probably do is put something alongside of it, but I'm going to have to send it in a bag anyway. It's going to be a parcel anyway, because it's more than a quarter inch thick. So at that point, it doesn't really matter what I do. It's going to be in the dumb bag. So I could put some tea in with it. Tea is flat. Um, I was thinking of the little flat Ghirardelli squares because they're flat. Um, the other thing I was going to make, I have to make another ornament. I was thinking about making the bells with a real bell on it, but that's going to be really thick because it's round. So I, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to do some, I'll have to find something different. Um, I have seen some round ornaments that are only one layer. And um, I'm going to try making some of those that could get it down to a quarter inch thick. So it could qualify for just a surcharge. Huh? So that's why I want you guys to take an ornament and your packaging and an, an address of the person who lives the furthest from you to your post office and see how much it's going to cost before you finish everything. You may have to change your plans. You may not realize how much it's going to cost to send that one because we get people all the time that thinking they're going to be able to send stuff as a letter and they can't. Um, or it, it's got to be charged parcel when they thought it was going to be charged a surcharge because of what it is. So, yeah, you need to, um, I wanted to recommend that you do that because uh, a lot of people are talking about what they're making and I want you to be prepared. Don't be scared, be prepared. <laughs> so yeah, um, that is my postal nut tip for the day. And I will wanted to show more um, examples of things, but this was the easiest thing I had to show you at the moment is what I was doing. Um, I don't have anything else other than a regular greeting card envelope with one layer of yarn would be a quarter of an inch. And that would give you postage, first class postage plus surcharge, a dollar six. That's what that would be, non-machinable. And they also have postage stamps. You can buy postage stamps to put on them. They're butterflies and they're each a dollar six. So you could do that instead of taking them to the post office and having an ugly, ugly computer thing put on it. You can buy the butterfly stamps. If you know that's how much it's going to cost because you went and checked, you can get the butterfly stamps and pay for them ahead of time and just put them on and drop them in the box or take them to your post office instead of standing in line and getting a, having the person do 20, 10, 20 packages. Just if it's going to be a dollar six, you can buy those stamps. Um, 
If you want to do it on your computer at home, give it a test. Do what I did. I punched in the information for somebody from Canada to find out what it was going to cost. And now I know how much it might cost. So you can do that also if you're using a third party shipper. The pirate ship doesn't charge me anything other than what it's costing me to send commercially because they get paid by these other commercial accounts. Um, so it costs me less, but that was $15 on, it's gotta be on the website, on post office website, it was $15. I haven't posted it into pirate ship to see how much that would be. Cause what I'm going to do is take one of these exactly that I'm going to mail and do it. So I'll probably do another video because what I want you to do is I want you to put any questions down in the comment section. And what I will do is take all those questions or anything that you want to tell me or say, and I will make another video and I will answer your questions and I will look things up and I'll research. And if there's something else you want to know, I will find out for you because I have resources at work and I have online resources and I have all of our manuals and our books. And I do know that there are some things that will get through. And you'll say, well, I sent this. Somebody did that to me yesterday. Well, I sent it this way and, and it got there. I said, well, yeah, it might have been getting there that one time. You might have been lucky it got there that one time. It depends who sees it on the other end and decides whether it's legal or not. Yeah, so um, sometimes things get through. Sometimes a clerk doesn't catch it and it will get through, it will get delivered. Sometimes we do catch it and um, it'll get sent back to be fixed and corrected. You do not want 10 packages being returned to you, um, postage due or insufficient, whatever. Not a, not a great thing when you have a lot of stuff to go out. So just letting you know, get a heads up. And that was some of the guidelines I found when I went online and did some research. And so put your questions below. I'll give you the website to pirate ship. It's, that's the one I use now. I'm sure there's others, but I use that one. And um, people are asking me and it is cheaper. Um, and they do charge one of my payment options that I give them. And you can use a prepaid card if you don't want to give out your, you, it's always nice to have a prepaid card. I have a card that is prepaid because I use, I get my plasma. When I donate plasma, they put the money onto a card. Well, that's a prepaid card. So there's a limit to how much is on there. They can only take what's on there. I use that for my gas and my groceries usually. So if I go get gas, I just let it run until it stops. And it's either the tank's full or the card's empty. So um, that works out fine for me. Now, you can use something like that on one of those sites so that you don't have to worry about somebody getting your number and spending money on it. But I've never had a problem with them on my site. I just always go over one ounce so I don't have it shortchanged because it is weighed um, along the way. And if it's not, if it's been deemed not enough postage, you will get recharged for more postage. So I always go up an ounce now when I do my stuff just to make sure it's covered. So, okay. Thanks for listening and um, give me your comments and your questions and I'll put up another video later with more information of anything you want to know. Okay. All right. Bye.